All right, guys, we're going to be reading The Children's Crusade of 1963, Boost Civil Rights. This is where you will be able to learn about the civil rights movement and how the actions of children like yourself help promote equality for all races in America. There are four chapters in this book, and we will go through each one of those. <clears throat> Some fast facts. Were people treated equally in the 1960s? Even though slavery ended after the Civil War, 1861 through 1865, not everyone experienced the same types of freedom. Many communities kept blacks and whites separate and had different rules for people of different races. In Birmingham, Alabama, blacks were not allowed to be clerks in stores or to sit down and order food in cafes. There were even rules that made it difficult for black citizens to vote. It's kind of difficult to highlight every word, so read along with your finger if you're having trouble keeping up. Who was Dr. Martin Luther King? We have studied him tremendous amounts of times. Um, I'm going to skip down to what was the Civil Rights Movement. The Civil Rights Movement was a collection of efforts by many people to work for fair treatment of black citizens. Here's a timeline that you can come back and review if you like. Um, we've studied timelines and how they progress from one period of time to another period of time. The Children Volunteer. The 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama was filled with people on May 1st, 1963, but the crowded building was silent. The rows of wooden pews and seats in the balcony were full as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stepped up to the podium. He looked at the crowd. With a booming voice, he asked for volunteers to go on to go to jail. Earlier that year, Dr. Mar uh, Dr. King had come to town with a mission to fill Birmingham's jail with peaceful protesters. The cost of maintaining a full jail would force the city to talk about segregation. Dr. King has spent the last half hour rousing the crowd. He shouted that it was time to remove the walls of segregation, but no one was eager to go to jail. If adults went to jail, they may have to stay for months. They often lost their jobs and the whole family struggled financially. For most of Dr. King's speech, the crowd had nodded their heads in agreement. Now, most of the men and women turned down their eyes and stared at the back of the pews before them. But the children were growing more excited. One child, 12-year-old Freeman Har Harbarski, put down his pencil and stopped working on his math homework in the back of the church to listen more closely to Dr. King. Reverend James Bevel had spent weeks training children how to take part in nonviolent protests. He figured kids could fill jails with less hardship on their families. Reverend Bevel watched with pride as children began standing to volunteer. Gwen Webb was 14 years old and had listened closely as Dr. King asked for help. With his words still ringing in their ears, Gwen stood up. Whispered conversations broke silence as parents leaned their heads down to talk with their children. Nine-year-old Audrey Hendricks stood and told her mom, I want to go to jail. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see this picture. And zoom in a little bit better so you can see this picture. Buffering a little bit, be patient. Still buffering, be patient.
Many children woke up the next morning thinking of freedom. Gwen turned on her radio to hear DJ Shelley, the Playboy, singing, Don't forget to bring your toothbrushes. There's going to be a party in Kelly Ingram Park today, and lunch will be served. Gwen and all of her other children, all the, excuse me, all the other children across Birmingham understood this code. The day was known as D-Day, and they were ready. Gwen put on her best dress and headed off to school. Along with thousands of other children, Gwen went to class and waited for the signal that it was time to begin the nonviolent demonstration. It was just before lunch when a few of the children looked out the large windows of the school and spotted a poster that read, It's time. The secret plans for the day were set in motion. The message carries quickly, um, excuse me, the message carriers quickly spread the news. One child ran down the hall to tell the school band another passed a note to the football team. First, a few children began leaving the school, then hundreds followed. Some of the school officials tried to close the front door step, uh, excuse me, close the front doors to keep the kids from participating, but the children were determined. They climbed out of the windows or ran out the back doors to join the demonstration. Gwen stood up from her desk with her head held high. She walked toward the window and looked at the green grass below. Then she threw one of her legs over the windowsill. She glanced back at her classmates who sat staring at her. But you said you were going to come, Gwen reminded them the night before. Uh, this page is still buffering. Let's hope that it is just a picture. We will find out by turning. So we can look at this picture while the words are buffering. Obviously that's Dr. King right there. Let's try refreshing the page. It's taking quite a long time. This is unfortunate. Let me zoom back in on the picture a little bit. Alrighty. I actually do have internet. Come on, come on. There we go. All right. The children leaped into their, excuse me, the children leaped to join her. Even children whose parents had told them not to participate couldn't resist the chance to join in. In the black schools all over town, children were walking out of their classes. On that beautiful spring day, a parade of excited children ages 7 to 18 made their way to the 16th Street Baptist Church where all the children had planned to meet. And this is months after this picture here. It's months after the Children's March demonstrators marched to Washington, D.C. Chapter 2, D-Day. Inside the brick church, the children took their places in the same pews and chairs that had been filled the night before. Dr. King was nowhere in sight, but other movement leaders encouraged them to be nonviolent, even if the police hit them with clubs or spit in their faces. Many of the children felt their stomachs twisting in nervousness, but they knew 
they had a job to do. Here's a picture of the children who were rounded up by police and sent to the overcrowded jails. Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth told them they were freedom fighters, but without weapons. Nearby, Reverend Bevel lined the kids up two by two in groups of 50. He opened the church doors to the bright light of the afternoon sun. In front of the church stood a large crowd. Parents and community members stood next to the police officers who, had, who held batons. The first set of children eyed the weapons, but didn't hesitate. They started singing and walked down the front stairs. They marched one and a half blocks before the police chief stopped them. He screamed in his bullhorn, if you do not disperse, you will be arrested. The children did not have a parade permit. As he said this, a white armored vehicle pulled up. All the people of Birmingham knew this car carried public, public safety commissioner Eugene Bull Connor. He was in charge of the police and fire departments, and Connor had been elected on his promises to keep blacks and whites separate. A string of paddy wagons pulled up behind Connor's tank. The commissioner stepped out with his own bullhorn and ordered the officers to take the children away. Officers grabbed the children and packed them tightly into small, barred cells of the paddy wagons. The wagons carried them off to jail. This is Bull Connor right here. As soon as the first group was arrested, the next group of 50 children left the church. They were also thrown into paddy, in, into paddy wagons and taken to jail. Reverend Bevel watched from the church and realized the plan was working. Next to him, the kids smiled knowing the jails were filling. The police brought, uh, brought school buses. This little girl right here is probably around seven years old because the caption says children as young as seven were arrested on D-Day. Very, very young. This way, they could arrest more children. The kids were proudly out the bus windows to, to the cheering crowd. Oh, excuse me. The kids waved proudly out of the bus windows to the cheering crowd as the bus pulled away. Approximately 973 children were arrested in one day. People from the black community gathered that evening in the 16th Street Baptist Church. More children knew they would have another opportunity to march the next day. Dr. King had been worried about letting the children participate, but now he saw what the children could do. He encouraged their parents to let the kids help. Tomorrow, they would send a message to all of Birmingham. Chapter 3, Violence in the Park. This picture here is of police officers that were using dogs to attack uh, peaceful protesters. So basically, they are standing out being very peaceful, and the cops were letting their dogs attack them or commanding their dogs to attack them. There wasn't enough time for all of the black children to participate in D-Day. So on May 3rd, 1963, black children poured into the 16th Street Baptist Church for another day of protest. This would be their time to help. Crowds of people and reporters came downtown to watch as well. Carolyn Mc uh, McKinstry parents told her to not uh, told her not to go. They were afraid of what might happen to the people who challenged the system of oppression. But 14 year old Carolyn put on a nice dress and went to the 16th Street Baptist Church anyway. She took her place in the pews with hundreds of other children. Gwen Webb was also there for a second day of protesting. Like the day before, children exited the church and began singing as they stepped out of the spring stepped out into the spring day. A group of children started walking toward the park, but this time Connor wanted to stop 
the black children from leaving their part of town. He had the fire department set up water cannons where kids were playing, planning to travel. As the children walked past the park toward the shops downtown, Connor waved his hand in a circular motion for people to turn on the hoses, to, to turn their hoses on. Suddenly, water blasted the children and knocked them down. The force of the water was powerful and children ran. Some tried to hide behind trees. The water ripped off the tree bark. The water was cold and it stung. It tore clothing and skin. Connor watched the scene with satisfaction and thought he'd won. But one small group of approximately 10 children stood up and held on to each other. They sang freedom, freedom, freedom as they pushed together into the force of the water and kept marching. This inspired the other children to get up and keep marching too. Carolyn made herself walk under the cold arching mist of the hoses. She remembered the warnings the marchers had been given. People told them it was possible they would be spat on, pushed around, and beaten, but she didn't recall anyone saying anything about water hoses. Suddenly, a hose turned on her. Here's a picture of not necessarily Carolyn, but other demonstrators um, who were pushed against the wall, these brick walls, having that water blasted on them. And this is a picture of um, what happened after they were arrested. Some women uh, were kept in a building on the state fairgrounds. She felt the sharp, cold slap of icy water sting her face. She ran and held on to the side of a brick building to keep from getting pushed down. Finally, the water stopped. There was a hole in her sweater. When she reached to touch her hair, she realized a large piece was missing. The large crowd grew angry, and the firefighters who sprayed the I mean, at the firefighters who sprayed the children, they started shouting and throwing rocks and bottles. Connor ignored them. He decided he needed to do more than spray children with water. He said, "I want to see the dogs work." German shepherds snarled and barked as officers held them back. The dogs were trained to attack if someone got too close. Several people were bitten by the dogs. Reporters from the national news watched the scene with wide eyes. They grabbed their cameras and snapped pictures of the children being attacked by water hoses and dogs. Some reporters were able to videotape the violence. On the second day of the protest, approximately 1,922 kids were arrested, including Gwen and Carolyn. But the city had county jails excuse me, but the city and county jails were full. More than 300 kids were already crammed into holding cells meant for 50 people. Most of the jails were so crowded that kids took turns sleeping because there wasn't enough space for all of them to lay down at once. They had small amounts of food every day, usually a bologna sandwich. Gwen was sent to the state fairgrounds and locked in a cattle pen with other kids. In the evening, it started to rain and water sank into the children's already damp clothes. Some parents went to the fairgrounds and threw sweaters and food to the children. But no matter where the children were detained, the kid, I mean, they kept their spirits up by singing about freedom. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with the buffering here. But apparently this is uh, some children who were arrested, uh, some, some arrested children who were crowded around the fences when people visited them in jail. I've assigned this book to you already on this website, so you can go back and look at these pictures. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the page. I'm afraid to pull back out of it because I don't want it to buffer even more. But please go back and look at these pictures. He caught a glimpse there, so you know what that was about. Um, that was Connor. So, uh, business owners were losing money fast. People were not shopping downtown. Birmingham officials decided to talk to the movement leaders in a closed-door meeting. On May 10th, after long negotiations, the shop 
owners of Birmingham and the protesters reached a settlement. The Birmingham Truce Agreement called for an end to the protests. In exchange, restrooms, lunch counters, and other facilities would be open to people of all colors and all white occup uh, uh, and all white occupations such as store clerks would now need to be filled with black people as well as white. The children were released from jail. Later in the evening, the sounds of the gospel songs rang out from St. John's Church where thousands of Birmingham black citizens were celebrating. However, not everyone in Birmingham was happy about the change. On May 11th, people upset with these new rules wanted to send a message to Birmingham's black citizens. They set off bombs at their home at the home of Dr. King's brother and the hotel where Dr. King had stayed. They set fire to other homes. There was still work to do in Birmingham to protect and ensure equal rights for all citizens, but people across the nation realized peaceful protests could make a difference. They were inspired by the brave children who stood up for equal rights. I'm going to go back and see if we can get this to work a little better. Let me go back and turn the page again. Let's go back a couple pages, matter of fact. Okay, didn't work very well. Let's keep trying though. All right. One month later, on June 11, 1963, Kennedy, Sp Kennedy appeared on television and addressed the nation about segregation. He sat at a desk while cameras zoomed close to his face. The sincerity in his eyes was clear. An American flag stood behind him. This is a picture of police officers and firefighters um, who arrived at the scene in, a Birmingham, in Birmingham after several homes were set on fire. Now, the time has come for this nation to fulfill its promise. The events in Birmingham and elsewhere have so increased the cries for equality that no city or state or legisl legislative body can prudently choose to ignore them, said Kennedy. So this chart is about poverty and race. So I'll read it to you. On average, black people live in poverty more often than white people in the United States. This hurts black people's opportunities and puts them at a disadvantage. Let's take a look at this chart here. On this side, we have the numbers 0 through 30. This is labeled percent of people who lived in poverty in 2016. Not that long ago, obviously. Eight point eight whites versus 22 blacks on average, percent wise. This picture is um, many whites um, who, um, um, although many white people, I'll just read to you, although many white people protested, black children were eventually allowed to attend schools that had previously only allowed white students. When Gwen and the other children heard that, they felt proud. Kennedy was talking about them. In the months that followed, Kennedy continued to work for civil rights. In November 1963, the president was assassinated. Government officials continue working to bring equality to all citizens. The Civil Rights Act passed in 1964. This law officially outlawed discrimination. Public places, pools and park, pools, parks and transportation had to be open to everyone. Schools needed to be desegregated and jobs had to be open to all, no matter their race or skin color. There were still times when black citizens were not treated fairly, but because of the Children's March in Birmingham and the Civil Rights Movement, people continued to work for equality. These are some things to think about, hence the title, Think About It.
feel free to pause and write your answers on paper that can be sent in to me uh, via text message or email um, and you will get credit for your work. So here's our gl glossary of terms. So some of the words that were highlighted in the book, if um, we've talked about almost all of these, actually we have talked about all of these except for water cannons, um, but basically they would be uh, extremely um, strong water hose type of uh, equipment. And this is where a lot of the, the, the information comes from the book. So feel free to take a look at those. And if you want to look up any of these books, you can do that. Index. So if you're looking, you want to go back and say, hey, I don't remember where we talked about the Baptist uh, 16th Street Baptist Church. You can come look in this index area, find 16th Street Baptist Church, water cannons, all kinds of things. Here's some websites. Uh, about the march, uh, some videos. You know, I always like to show uh, some videos after we talk about interesting things. Um, and if you want to learn some more about this, here are some books that you can look at. These books are on this website. Feel free to look them up. It's one about Montgomery bus boycotts, Barack Kennedy, uh, the president that was talked about in the story. Okay. Well, you see, I earned my points because I completed a book. You can do the same. Hope you enjoyed the reading.